Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Rome Over Landing. Last week's episode, we sorted out our spotlights and there did all of that wiring. <laughs> yeah. um, this week, we're actually gonna be just making a few more tweaks to the setup. I'm running some cables through to the canopy to power an air compressor. Um, also, we're doing some maintenance on the long range tank and I'm keen to get going and get the vehicle ready so we can finally do the walk around video. Another task I was hoping to accomplish while I'm here at Rev House is to run a set of cables, a second set of cables to the back of the canopy. And this is basically gonna be for my air compressor. Um, so you need to run a really heavy gauge cable, basically the same as running a dual battery system, because actually my air compressor uses 45 amps, whereas my National Lunar DC to DC charger uses 25 amps. So it's even more important to use a really solid gauge cable, put a sleeving over it and use a nice powerful inline fuse. So we've got a 60 amp inline fuse that we're gonna be using and um, basically running these cables from the front here all the way to the back. It's a 10 meter cable, it's not cheap, <laughs> um, but it is actually just the only way to do it. So I'm just unraveling the wires, getting the kinks out of them so that I can put them in some sleeving and then run them underneath the chassis and everything. It's also gonna help me give me my measurement, but I'm not gonna cut any of these cables until absolutely necessary. We'll run them through all the way and then we can put on our Brad Harrison connector at the back here, which is gonna match up with the Brad Harrison I've put on my air compressor. So, here we go. Now we can get some sleeving. Sleeve these cables together. We're going to make a cut at the side where the battery is for the inline fuse on the positive cable. Um, and then we can basically get this done and dusted. We're actually going to lift the vehicle up and then I'm going to be able to actually stand and work with the cable rather than like being scrunched on the ground because it is quite congested underneath the vehicle. Dual battery system, diff breathers, a bunch of stuff. So if we lift the vehicle up, Hopefully I can chase the cable properly and get it through to the back of the vehicle nicely. But it'll go quite long because I'm actually going to pull it in through the other headlight, not the one where the dual battery is because that's also very cramped there. So let's see, hopefully I can get this done and dusted now um, and we can get that air compressor hooked up. It was a real pain to get it over the tank. Needless to say, arms were put into places where they probably shouldn't have been. But now all we're going to do is we're going to run this cable up through the tail light and into the back of the canopy. And then we will put a Brad Harrison plug on it, connect it up to the battery, and we have got a fully powered air compressor. It is through. I've tried to make as small a hole as possible to maintain the dust seal on the canopy. So, so that it almost works like a uh, grommet. Now it's just a matter of hooking up this Brad Harrison plug. I might leave a bit of length in this cable, just in case I do need to pull the air compressor out of there at some point and use it outside the vehicle. So what's left to do now is um, put the inline fuse in and then connect that air compressor up to the battery and earth it. Now, the way we've run this cabling for the air compressor is exactly the same way you would run it for a dual battery system. So you, we've taken all the same precautions, we're using all the same lugs, the same type of cable, the same plugs, everything is exactly the same. So you could take the what we've done here and then use that to run a dual battery or something like that. But now what's gonna be nice is we do have just another straight battery output into the back of the canopy for anything else that might need a direct connection to the battery. So we don't have to interfere with our dual battery system at all. Okay. So essentially what we need to do now is we're gonna put a lug, you can see here, we're gonna put a lug on this cable and we're gonna put a lug on that cable and then the fuse is gonna sit in between them. Then we're gonna put a lug on the end of this cable and that's gonna to connect to the battery. That's a 
overall experience. Nice, right, so that's one end done. Uh, one, two, three more to go. <laughs> Air compressor is working. All I need to check now is to see if my little 12 volt things are working inside the car. But that's it for today at Rev House. We'll be back tomorrow, nice and early, to finish everything up so we can finally get ready to hit the road. So, long range tanks are incredibly beneficial. They really are. I mean, you don't have to carry jerry cans up on your roof. You manage to drop your center of gravity because you carry all of that additional liquid weight between the chassis. It's, it really is a great thing to have, but it does have its downsides. One of the biggest downsides is having to drop your spare wheel, if being able to fit your spare wheel underneath at all. Um, and obviously, one of the things with long-range tanks a lot of people forget is they need to be maintained. They need to be dropped out, they need to be painted, they need to be pressure checked for cracks and things like that. Um, and it is a bit of a pain to do that whole process. So because the spare wheel dented the tank, it dented the bracket, it dented a whole bunch of things underneath the vehicle there. And that's not really something you think about too often. So at least now we can just lift the tank, connect it up again. We've got to do some maintenance on the hoses and things as well while it's there. And then we are good to go for the next good couple of trips with the long range tank. So this is the old pipe. Now it looks really good, it looks thick and solid and all that stuff and it's multi-purpose fuel, oil, air, water, hose. But this is rated to 20 bar. So this thing is really strong, probably way stronger than necessary for a filler hose. Um, so it doesn't like to bend that much and to be honest, the thickness of it was wrong completely wrong so it just wasn't fitting on the tank and it was because it was so tight and so hard it was actually pulling itself off so we're swapping to this it's a silicon hose we've because it's a bit thinner and a bit more pliable it can kink so we've added a bit of a dog leg into it and it's actually taking a much more direct path to the fuel tank I think this is going to work much nicer for us and we're not going to have any issues and if we do have issues What's nice with this is it's easier to put on and off, but also because it's thinner, your clamps actually work. This is way too thick for the clamps to actually work. So it'll be interesting to see the change and we've got another piece of this as a spare just in case. The pipe is all done. That's at least sorted. Long range tank is fully functioning again. It's been cleaned up inside, it's been painted, all of that stuff. So we are good to go on that section. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna drop the vehicle and then I am gonna try and put the spare wheel on the roof rack without breaking my back. Uh, let's see how that goes. <laughs> I have to get my spare, the full spare up here and it is really heavy. So I've got to figure out how to do that. It is possible. Um, I'm a young guy, I should be able to do it, but I do have back issues. So I need to just be careful with it. If it can go up here and down here, fine then I'm happy to do this for a bit more of a long-term thing. But honestly, this is only for a couple months, maybe one trip where I'm gonna need the spare up here. Um, the reason why we're doing this is because when we put the long range tank in, I don't want that spare tire there where the long range tank is. We've had to panel beat the long range tank because I did some four by fouring and I bumped that spare tire and it dented the whole long range tank. I just don't want any cracks or anything developing. So it's gonna be best to separate a spare tire from the long range tank. A nice fix here would be to have a rear bumper with a swing out spare, spare wheel carrier, but I don't have that, so I've got to make do with what I have. We're swapping the spare wheel holder from this side of the vehicle to the other side of the vehicle because I was just thinking about it, and if you have to change your tire on the side of the road, you're gonna pull off on the side of the road, and if you have to pull that tire off and it slips for whatever reason and it bounces and it rolls, it's not gonna roll across the traffic. If it's on that side, it might run into a fence or something like that. 
Um, so I think that's just going to be much safer to do in the end. But yeah, this is going to be interesting. So this is what I've got to see now. This is how the heck I'm going to do this nicely. Hopefully you only have to do this once or twice when you're out in the bush. Now to take it off. Do 10 of those a day, and you will be so strong. <laughs> I'm gonna need to change all my clothes every time I change a tire. This is where I feel like it. Get up here, transfer that there, and then play. Oh yeah. No scratches, okay. Done. Now that the spare is up and everything is sorted, we got the air compressor done, long range tank is done. There are a few small little things that I wanted to kind of still do during the week. First thing was putting LED reverse lights, park lights and indicators. Um, and then next up was actually installing a tire pressure monitor system, a battery voltage monitoring system and a, a fridge monitoring system. And that's all um, with the N-Gage 4x4 kind of Bluetooth connectivity. So all of that information syncs through onto my phone. It's very, very cool. Um, I'm going to show you guys more on all of these things in next week's episode. Um, so join us for the full walk around of the Hilux of the Rome 2.0 build. Really put the, you know, an end to this chapter of the Rome 2.0 build and have a look at everything the way it is. Because when the next trip comes around, which is the following episode, things are changing big time on the build. So, you know, before I make any changes, I just want to wrap it all up and show you guys everything and give you some feedback on how I feel about everything. Anyways, thank you so much for tuning in this week and I will catch you next week. Cheers. I just want to thank my incredible Patreon members for their continued support. We meet up once a week, every week, to chat about everything going on with the Hilux, with the travels and even personal stuff. If you'd like to join in on those weekly live streams, please consider heading to the link below and joining us. Anyways, we'll catch you next week. Cheers.